Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're on code.org, Unit 5, Lesson 4.2. Before we begin looking at Part 2, what I want to do is look at Part 1, which is the working app before we begin. Let's go ahead and look and see how this functions. All right, as soon as we run the app, the add reminders text appears onto the screen. We have a left and a right button. That's not going to work until we add a few comments. All right, now that I've done that, we have one, two, and three. So let's go ahead and jump into building this app. As we begin, we're going to need to create two different variables. So let's go ahead and drag that onto our screen. The first variable is going to be our list that is going to be created based upon the input here. Let's go ahead and call this reminder list. You just want to make sure it's something that makes sense for your app. We're going to go ahead and click out of that. The other variable that we need to do is to create an index variable that starts at zero. And we're going to use that to check this list. Now that we've created that, we need to go ahead and create on event click buttons for the two arrows and our add button. So let's go to the UI controls. We're gonna do on event three times. I'm gonna go ahead and separate this out just so I can more easily see what I'm looking at. It's up to you whether you do that or not. And then I'm also going to add my comments just above. And hopefully I won't forget to add that. That's probably the easiest part to forget as you're creating your app. And we're adding comments so that if you need to come back to this in the future, hopefully your comment will help you quickly identify what's going on. Or maybe you're working with somebody else and they need to look over your app. And that will help them quickly identify what's going on. The first button that we're going to look at is this left button. So on and then we'll select the left button here. What this button does is allows us to go to the left in our list of reminders, and it shouldn't be used in the beginning. You shouldn't be able to use it in the beginning because there are no entries when the app is first run. And we also don't want this to go past our index of zero because that will mess it up. So we're going to keep that in mind as we're building this out. We need to use the if. What we're going to do is we're going to check this index number to see if it's greater than zero. So we'll type in index greater than zero. Now I type that in and I can click out and we can see that it uses the math operator to populate this. As you feel more comfortable coding things, you might not need some of these tools that you needed a few projects ago. In fact, at some point, we're probably going to click the show text to type in some things. As you feel more comfortable, it might be faster and easier for you. If you're not there yet, that's also okay. Keep practicing and you'll get there. If the index is greater than zero, what do we want it to do? We want the index number to move through the list and go down by one for each click. I want to click and drag this, but it won't let me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the show text. And what I'm going to do is go index minus one. On the next one, I'm going to change up how we change the index number. But for this, you're familiar with typing in things this way, so we'll leave it. Eventually, we're going to build a function, and we're going to need to add that function to the bottom of this. But we're going to do that after we create the function. So we've now set up our left button. Let's move on to our right. We're going to need another if function. We're going to select right button. And I'm realizing I just missed my comment, but we'll go ahead and do that when we do the other button. On click is good. Our if needs to be to check the index, which we've looked at in the previous button, is less than. We're going to do our reminder list, which is our variable. And we're going to look at the actual length. And what we need to do here is subtract one. We'll click out of this so that it populates with all the different color blocks that you're used to. Why are we using the list length minus one? Well, if you had three comments and you wanted to display the third number here, it's going to show three, but that number is going to be different from where that entry is indexed. That third entry would actually be at index number two. And so we need to subtract one to get to that index. 
if that's the case, I'm going to click in here again. We're going to do index plus plus. And that's different from what we did up here, which was minus one. If I would have done plus one here, that would have been the same as plus plus. And had I put minus minus here, that would have also subtracted just one. So either way here is correct. It's just up to you how you'd like to do it. Let's go ahead and click show our blocks. And what we're going to do is we're going to comment out our code. Now that we've done that, we need to create one more on event, and that's going to be for our add button. We'll go ahead and select add button. Within this, we're going to go ahead and create a local variable. So let's go to variables. I'm going to call this reminder add. We'll go to the UI controls because we need to go ahead and get text. Our get text is going to be from the reminder input. Let's go back to variables because this time we're going to go ahead and click append item. Our list is going to be reminder list, which is the variable that we created at the top of our app. And then right here is where we're going to put in that global variable that we just created. This too will get the update function when we create it, but we won't add that right now. Let's go ahead and comment out this section. The last thing that we need to do is create our function. Let's go ahead and click and drag that down. We'll create some separation here. The purpose of this function is show our message here. So essentially what this is going to do is update our screen. Code.org has consistently used update screen as the name of the function that does this. So we'll go ahead and continue what they've started. The first thing that we want to do is set our property. The reminder input here, we want it to be empty. Now, let me go ahead and show this. If I click design and click on this, we have a placeholder text which displays there. We don't want to replace it. And we also want the app to clear out when we click the add button. So we want to replace this text, but we do want new reminder there. The first thing we're going to do is set that to be empty. And this section, we're just going to do quote, quote, no space in between. Now we need to use our if else to fill out the rest of this function. What we're going to have our if function do is we're going to look to the length of our reminders list. And we're going to look to see if that list length is greater than zero. If it does, we're going to have it do two things. We're going to have it display the reminder at the current index that the app is displaying. We're also going to have it update this counter button here. So let's go ahead and do reminder list dot length. And is that greater than zero? We'll go back to our UI controls and because we're going to do two set properties. The first step property we talked about was the reminder output, which is this right here. This is going to be text. And this section right here is going to be reminder list. We're going to do open bracket index. So it pulls that index number and we'll close out of it. And it will pull the text at that index location. The second thing we need to worry about is this count output. This too will be text. We'll go to the math. Instead of typing this one out, and we're just going to click and drag that all the way to the right. What we want to do is index, and I chose the plus because we need to add one. We need to remember that when computers count, they start at zero. Humans, when they count, start at one. We want the number one to display here, even though it's at index zero. And when we move to the second index, we want it to show two. Again, because that's how humans count. We don't want to confuse the people using the app. Adding this plus one will add one to our index entry. 
Our final part of this function is that we need to add a default message here on the app when it's first run and there's nothing in our list. So we're going to go back to the UI controls. We're going to click set property. We want this one to be the reminder output. It's going to be text again. And the text that they had on screen was add reminders. It's going to comment out our code. We are not done yet. Right here on the left of our lines, it shows us that the update screen has not been used within our program. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add this to each of our on the clicks. Now that we've done that, that disappears. We need to add this to all of our on-click events. So I'm going to go to show text, and I'm actually just going to copy this. Be careful where you put this, because you don't want to put it in the wrong spot. So I put it within each of the on-clicks, but I also need to add it to the top of our program, because we want this to run as soon as the app is run. So I'm going to click show blocks. Let's pull this up and we'll test our code. Right away, our add reminders text populates and I can see that I spelled reminders wrong. So let's go ahead and fix that. All right, that looks a little bit better. We'll go ahead and type in. We'll click through our arrows. When I try and click past my third entry, it doesn't allow me to go further. My left button, it's not working. For some reason, it didn't like my minus one there. Maybe you need to use the minus minus, and I was incorrect when I told you earlier that you could use minus one. The fact that we went and tested out our code revealed to us this issue, and that's good. Even your teacher makes mistakes. I don't know everything. It's okay to get things wrong. Just experiment, practice, it'll be okay. I want to encourage you to use this video to work through this project, that you go back and click the version history and reset this to the beginning, and try and build the app without any help. The important part is that you understand the different features that were introduced in this unit thus far, and that you can implement them within the app. Once you're done with the project, make sure you hit finish.